All right. Well, I guess we can go ahead and get started now. Welcome. I'm Sarah Joseph, and tonight we're talking about parenting essentials for difficult times. So I thought I would start with just introducing myself. Um, I am the mom of two, and I live on the Sunshine Coast of British Columbia, Canada. Um, and I have a master's in social work, and I am a parent educator, positive discipline trainer, and I've been um, working with families for over 10 years now, doing counseling and parent education and support services. I'm also an author. I wrote a book um, for children, and um, I also wrote, I'm working on a second book for parents, <laughs> which is really exciting. Um, and I started using doTERRA oils about five years ago. I'm really not sure how I lived without these oils. Um, you might feel the same way. I don't know how I functioned in my daily life or with as a mother without them. And quickly I realized how effective they were um, and how much of a practical, tangible tool they were for parenting. And so I uh, very quickly started sharing uh, them with other parents and have been teaching parents how to use essential oils um, ever since. So I'm really excited to be here and be able to share with you uh, some of the tools uh, and ways that I've been using essential oils um, as a mom and how um, how you can use them too. So I am the author, as I mentioned, of a children's book called The Animals in My Brain, A Kid's Guide to Understanding and Controlling Their Behavior, um, and also the Parenting Essentials card deck, which is available through Oil Life. Um, and I'm in the midst of finishing a, a book by the same name, Parenting Essentials, which will hopefully be available <laughs> in September. Uh, working hard to get to meet that deadline. <laughs> Um, but I wanted to start tonight when we're talking about um, parenting and when we're talking about parenting through difficulties, I thought that it would be a good place to start by explaining how the brain works. Um, I find this information really, really powerful in helping us understand what's going on for ourselves and for our kids. So let me start by explaining to you how I explain to kids in, the, in my book called The Animals in My Brain. Um, I use the animals as a way to describe the different parts and processes of the brain. So it's a little more tangible and understandable for us non-scientific people. <laughs> um, so we start with our guard dog, who is the amygdala. Um, and the amygdala is the part of the brain that's in control of, of warning us about danger. So it takes in everything that's going on around us and decides if that is safe information or not safe information. So it's going to take in the sights and the smells and the sounds of what's happening around you and decide if that it should warn you that danger is approaching or if it should just let that information flow up to the higher levels of your brain for processing like the wise old owl and the hippocampus so the hippocampus is the elephant and the wise old owl is our prefrontal cortex our elephant helps us um, learn and remember and recall things when we are um, when we're learning or trying to remember things in a test situation or recalling information to share with others. And our wise old owl is our prefrontal cortex. So that's the part of our brain that's in control of reasoning and logic, impulse control, language and problem solving. So if the information our amygdala sees, hears or smells is safe, it thinks it's okay, it lets it go up to those higher parts of the brain for our brain to do what it needs to do with it. Process it, catalog it, connect it to other experiences. If it believes, if the guard dog believes that it, that information is, is dangerous, then it sets off a warning signal in our brain. It starts barking, right? 
And that wakes up Anthony the ape, who is our fight, flight, or freeze response. Now, when Anthony is awake and in charge of the brain, he scares off the wise old owl and Elsa the elephant. And so when our fight, flight, or freeze response is, in, is activated, we lose access to the parts of our brain, the prefrontal cortex and the hippocampus, which helps us with reasoning, logic, impulse control, language, problem solving, learning, <laughs> recalling. So the, the most important parts of our brain are inaccessible to us. The parts of our brain that helps us uh, calm down and reason and make sense of things is gone. The parts of our brain where we have stored all our parenting information, like the stuff that you're learning tonight, it's not accessible, right? So often when Anthony's in charge, we do and say things that get us into trouble as adults and kids, okay? So the problem with this process or with our guard dog, the amygdala, is that um, our guard dog's kind of like a puppy. He doesn't really know the difference between what's truly dangerous and what is just somebody pushing your buttons or you starting to feel flustered and overwhelmed, stressed um, in a situation. He responds in the exact same way. So this process is super helpful <laughs> if we're in a dangerous situation. Like say your child ran into the street and there was a truck barreling down. This information would be this process of Anthony helping us act with his <laughs> thinking would be really helpful in that moment because we'd be able to just jump into the street and grab our child where, you know, it wouldn't be helpful for the wise little owl to jump in and be like, hmm, I wonder if we should flag down the truck driver or if we should just jump into the street or maybe I should yell my child's name and yell stop, right? That could be devastating. <laughs> so this process helps us survive, right? And it helps us keep our children safe. However, it, it is also a disservice to us when it responds in the same way just because our child is whining and we're feeling annoyed, right? We have sometimes overreactions when that's happening. The other piece of information that's really important for you to know when we're learning about the brain is that when your child is in that fight, flight, or freeze response, so when they're feeling emotionally overwhelmed, right? It's not just because they're in danger, but say that their sibling was poking their buttons, pushing their buttons, bugging them, stealing their toy, or heaven forbid you said no to them, they might move into this fight, flight, or freeze response, which means that they have lost access to that prefrontal cortex or the wise old owl part of their brain that's going to help them with reasoning, with logic, with impulse control, which means that it is not a good time for you to try to reason with them, try to explain to them what's happening. It's not a good time for you to correct their behavior or to try to problem solve with them, okay? The only thing that we can do when we're in this state is really to take a break and try to come back down to our base level, to being calm. And now, the, um, I don't, I lost my train of thought there. I'm not sure what I was going to say, but yes, the only thing that we can do there is to take a break. Okay. So also I wanted to mention this window of tolerance thing. I'm not sure if you've heard this term before of window of tolerance, but our window of tolerance is basically our capacity for handling stress, right? It's the space in within us, that open window, the space of the amount of stress that we can handle. So think about, let's imagine <laughs> you had an important meeting to get to at 9 a.m. and your alarm didn't go off, so you woke up late. And then you're rushing around the house trying to get ready and your child is not cooperating and is dragging their feet and you're having a really hard time getting out the door, you finally get everybody ready and you can't find your keys, right? Then you get on the road and you're following behind somebody um, who's doing, you know, 40 in an 80 zone. 
And then <laughs> you finally get your child to daycare or to school and you're back in the car and you're off to your meeting and you realize that you've forgotten some files at home that are really important for this meeting, right? So the stress is just piling on, piling on. Now, as that's happening, you are coping with that stress, right? So you have this capacity to handle some of these stressful events and you're using your coping mechanisms. You might be using your oils, you might be taking deep breaths, you might be counting to 10, whatever it is that works for you um, to help you handle the stress as it's building, right? So you might be feeling frustrated, but you're still functioning. When you, know, you get to work and you spill, you're about to go in and you spill coffee on your white shirt, Right? And then all these other stuff keeps piling on throughout the day. It's just a really like horrible day. <laughs> and all of these other stresses keep happening and your window keeps closing and closing and closing until there's no room left for any more stress because you just can't handle anything else. Right? And you get home at the end of the day and you walk in and you immediately trip over somebody's shoe that was not put away. And you completely blow out, right? Completely have a meltdown, lose it, start screaming at everybody. And your family thinks, holy moly, it was just a shoe. She just freaked out over a shoe. But for you, it was the, it was the straw that broke the camel's back, right? There was a whole bunch of stuff. And so I like to explain it this way because I want you to understand that we all have a different window of tolerance. Now, some of us who are really good at self-care and getting an appropriate amount of sleep and who have um, stress coping skills, some tools that we lean on and use, then we often have quite a large window of tolerance. We can handle quite a bit of stress before we blow, right? But other people sometimes who have experienced trauma, who have anxiety, who maybe have learning disabilities, these all, all things can, can close that window of tolerance. And so when they start their day, their window is very small and they only have room for one or two things before they blow, right? So it's really helpful to, to recognize where your window of tolerance is. Is it open? Is it closed? Is it closing, <laughs> right? And to recognize it for your child as well. Where's your child's, when, where are their optimal functioning range, right? We wanna be in this optimal functioning range as much as possible throughout our days, especially when we're trying to learn at school or when we're at work, right? With, with our kids. Um, and then there's the zones where just outside of that, your window is, is closing and it's the be careful zone. Right, and so then the be careful zone, we want to make sure that we're taking a break and we're doing something that's going to help our window reopen. So we're letting go some of those stressful events that have been happening, that have been causing our window to close. We're taking care of ourselves. Um, and, then, and then if we reach the end of that, if our window closes completely and we reach the end of that rainbow, it's the extreme distress, right? And again, extreme distress looks different for everybody um, because sometimes it looks like we are um, shutting down and sometimes it looks like we are, are exploding, okay? Um, so it's really normal to have a, a smaller window of tolerance during stressful times. So during a pandemic where <laughs> everything has changed and access to money might be more difficult, um, access to education might be more difficult, getting access to privacy or to time alone or to um, have time for self-care might be more difficult. It's natural for our windows of tolerance to be smaller and for us to have less patience and to blow more often. So if you are experiencing that yourself as a parent, you feel like you're flying off the handle more quickly than normal, that you're running out of patience more quickly than normal, or if you experience that as a parent where you see your child is misbehaving more often or having meltdowns more often, I want you to know that that is normal right now. It's to be expected. 
we're already dealing with a lot of stress and change and it's absolutely okay for us to be um, having that smaller window of tolerance right now. What would be helpful is if we recognize that our window of tolerance is smaller right now and we start taking care of ourselves better, right? Often when we start experiencing stress, self-care is one of the first things to go. <laughs> Isn't that funny how that happens? But it's true. It seems to be the thing that falls off the, the quickest when we start experiencing any type of stress. So what we need the most right now is self-care. We need, we need to um, be using our oils, right, to help us emotionally and help keep us a little more stable and grounded um, and to help us release the emotions that we're, the stress that we're bottling up, right? Also sleep and eating properly are all really helpful. Exercise as much as you can do it, right? Okay. So some of the things that can really help with keeping your window open is that self-care. Um, and for me, like using frankincense, yarrow palm and grapefruit is super helpful um, for self-care because it, frankincense is helpful for getting us unstuck and helping us release, clear out emotions. Um, the yarrow palm helps us feel safe and grounded and secure and grapefruit really helps us tap into what our bodies need okay for sleep my one of my favorite all-time blends for sleep is cedar wood juniper berry and wild orange together um, it's so grounding and soothing helps to deal with fears and um, and and just really helps relax us into sleep um, also moving our body for me that's yoga i really like the slow um, movement of yoga and the mindfulness that is attached to it it feels like i can take the lessons i learn on the mat and apply them to my life um, for you it might be something more like running but just moving your body is really important right whatever that looks like for you so for me yoga um, and using grounding Grounding um, oils like sandalwood and vetiver, and again, grapefruit, really helpful for connecting with your body um, and listening to what the needs of your body are. And then of course, eating right. Um, when we get stressed, we sometimes emotionally eat. Sometimes, how about you, <laughs> right? So <laughs> when we're feeling stressed, it's really helpful if, we're, if we up our consumption of good foods, healthy foods, and um, use our supplements to help with, with that. Um, I'm just trying to see what the chat's saying here. Um, okay. Um, and then I had this, um, this diffuser blend that you could help, you could use to help keep your tolerance levels open, your window open, and it's one drop patchouli, three drops grapefruit, four drops black spruce. So again, patchouli is really wonderful at helping us stay grounded and connecting with our bodies and, um, and the grapefruit is gonna help us connect with our bodies more and listen to what our body is saying to us because our bodies send us cute clues about our feelings and thoughts um, before we maybe are, are um, expressing those um, out loud. And then black spruce is a wonderful oil for stability and for helping us in trying times. So um, yeah, four drops black spruce. I've been loving this, this diffuser bend lately. Give it a try and let me know what you think of it. All right, so one of the other things I wanted to talk to you about about the brain is how we establish um, patterns in our behavior and our reactions through our brain pathways. So our brain um, establishes pathways when we experience repeated emotional reactions. So for instance, your child is whining and complaining and whining some more, and it's really getting under your skin and you're starting to feel really frustrated. Then you have a response to that, right? And it might be the ape response because your guard dog starts barking because you're feeling annoyed and frustrated. And then you flip um, into the ape response instead of using your wise old owl to help calm the situation, right? And when you do that, you jump into this, 
this mode of using the fast route of your brain, right? Where you're, you're acting without thinking. And it establishes a pathway in your brain where you run into that knee jerk reaction, right? So you're frustrated and then you end up getting upset and yelling at your child to stop whining. Um, and then you feel bad about it and your child's crying, right? And so that's, that's a pathway and it becomes a pattern. And so how the brain establishes these pathways is we repeat the same experience over and over again. And then that pattern becomes this really ingrained pathway in our brain. Now, the nice thing to know is that we can create new pathways um, and we can get rid of old pathways we're no longer using. So we can create new pathways um, and rewire our brain to help us parent the way that we've always wanted to parent. And one of the ways we're gonna do that is with essential oils, and I'll talk about that in a second. But I want you to know that, you know, we really what, what's happening is we are, we're flipping into that fast route and we're going down the same pathway that we've been traveling down. And every time we do that, it gets a little bit faster and a little bit easier to travel down that route. Now, if you have a behavioral reaction that you're experiencing yourself that you don't want to do anymore, and that might be emotional eating, it might be yelling at your kids, it might be um, having a meltdown and like running out of the room, <laughs> right? Whatever it is for you. Um, just know that you can change that. It just, it takes some practice in catching, figuring out what your, your trigger is, figuring out what your normal behavior reaction is, and then being able to create a little bit of space between those two things so that we can create a new pathway and actually be able to see that that's a possible pathway. Okay. And that's why I love using essential oils when I'm, when I'm teaching parents how to do this, because essential oils are so powerful in the way that they work with our brains. So what happens is we inhale essential oils and their, their aromatic molecules enter our nose and enter our um, olfactory membranes. And that gets transfer the membranes process those molecules and transmit them as signals to the part of our brain including our hippocampus and our amygdala in the limbic system so our guard dog is one of the first things that gets the signal from the essential oils all right and so there our body is able to trigger memories evoke a feeling change a feeling um, affect our mood it can help release natural chemicals that help relax and calm us. And so, and that works almost instantly, right? So if you feel like you're moving into that flight or flight, if you hear, if you can feel that your guard dog is barking, um, the first things that you can do is grab an essential oil, like maybe your balance, right? Balance is a great one <laughs> and give it a smell. Um, and I would just, you know, you can put it right under your nose. You can put a drop in your hands and take a couple of deep calming breaths with it. And that's going to immediately make a difference to the way that you feel. All right. And one of the things that we're going to, we want to try to do is catch ourselves when our dog, our guard dog is starting to bark or growl before we flip into, um, that fight, flight, or flight response with our ape coming out. Because when we can catch it um, at that moment, before we go into the full-blown fight, flight, or freeze, if we can catch it before that, it takes a lot less time to diffuse our, our feelings and a lot less time for our, our body physiological responses to come back to baseline than it does if we go all the way into the meltdown mode. Okay, I think I saw somebody comment here. Let me see if I can see what that says. Um, okay. Great. Okay. So I wanted to teach you, oops, I lost my slide there. I wanted to teach you this aromatic anchoring technique. So if you have an oil nearby, grab it and give this a try. Okay. 
basically all we're going to do is the an anchoring technique is a simple way for us to allow ourselves to change an unwanted feeling or reaction in a moment in a matter of moments right because what we're going to do is we're going to practice with the essential oil calming and what it feels like so again i have my magnolia here so you can use your magnolia or your balance or whatever oil you want to use to do this and i would just roll it or drop it in the palm of your hand or roll it under your nose just like that and then rub your hands together and take a couple of nice deep breaths and you should automatically start feeling the oils going to work helping to calm your automatic nervous system right calming sending a calming sensation and what we're going to do is we're going to start using that oil to cue our brains to go back down that pathway of feeling relaxed and feeling calm and feeling um, grounded. Okay. So you've already got your little pathway started. And if you continue to use that oil in that way, when practice feeling calm, feeling grounded, then it will become a cue to your brain. And then when you're feeling upset, you can go back to using that exact oil that we just used to, to help you jump back to that feeling again. Does that make sense? Right? It's so easy and simple, but just the way that you are, you know, when you go walk into, um, when you smell cinnamon, it might instantly take you back into that memory of your grandmother's kitchen. This works in the exact same way, right? When you smell this oil that you've been practicing taking deep breaths with, relaxing with, meditating with, and then you have a moment where you're feeling stressed and anxious or overwhelmed and you smell that oil, it's going to instantly take you back to that memory of how you felt when you were, when you were practicing with it. So, it's really important if you want this to work for you that you do the practicing okay it's kind of like a fire drill you have to practice in order for it to work when you need it right so if you can if you can build some some practice into into your life every day then that's going to help build the pathway more quickly and deeper let me see somebody's has their hand raised here let me check and see if it's a comment all right. Yeah, and this is a great tool to um, teach your kids too, right? If you can, you know, have a couple minutes, it doesn't take long, maybe two or three minutes every day where you're just taking a few minutes to maybe practice some mindfulness together or just be quiet and still together. Um, and use your essential oils to take some nice deep breaths. And if you can use the same oil over and over again every day when you're practicing, it's going to help build that pathway in your brains so that when you need it and you're upset and you're feeling overwhelmed, you can go back to that oil that you've been using. And it's gonna bring you right back to that feeling of feeling calm and feeling grounded and feeling safe, okay? All right, so let me move forward here. So I wanted to share with you a couple of the, a couple of the slides or a couple slides that are the cards from the card deck that is available with Oil Life, my parenting essential card deck. And this card is about feeling triggered, right? So being triggered is really an uncomfortable emotional response to particular behavior, memory, or process. So this could be as simple as your child whining and that could trigger an emotional response from you. It could be that the smell of something triggers a memory in your brain that makes you feel uncomfortable, right? Um, of that time when you were um, a child and somebody was making fun of you because you brought an egg salad sandwich to school, right? <laughs> um, it, it could be anything like that. And so being triggered is a really normal thing for both kids and adults. Um, it's really just feeling overwhelmed emotionally. And um, 
And it's easier, well, like I was saying, it's easier to help ourselves calm down after we're feeling triggered if we can bring some awareness to what it feels like in our body when we are triggered. Because our bodies know before our brain knows. So if you can take a moment to teach yourself or to help yourself learn and teach your children, what does it feel like in your body when your guard dog is barking? right? When you're starting to feel emotionally overwhelmed, what does it feel like? Maybe what are some of the thoughts that I say to myself when I'm feeling that way, right? I know for me, my self-talk turns into, I can't handle this. I'm going to lose it. Why are they doing this to me? And when that happens, it's a, it's a cue to me. It's a signal to me that I am feeling triggered and I need to go and take a break. I need to take a pause. I need to help myself calm down. I need to help myself release that trigger. Otherwise I'm going to go into full meltdown mode. Right? So one of, again, um, a couple of oils that you can use when you're feeling triggered to help yourself is magnolia. Magnolia is a wonderful one to help calm our nervous systems and bring it back down to baseline and help us tap into our own self-compassion to help our help ourselves calm down. And black spruce is another one that I use a lot when I'm feeling triggered. It is going to help us feel more grounded and return us to that balanced state of being. Um, again, it's really a great oil for stability and feeling like we can weather the storm. Okay. So yes, yeah, so watch for those clues though, for yourself and for your child of what it feels like. And I have to tell you, when I started um, using that graphic of the animals in my brain and reading the book to kids in, in my counseling practice, um, kids get it. They come in, parents come into my counseling practice and they tell me all the time um, that that their kids recognize when their guard is when their guard dog is barking and are able to stop themselves from going into full meltdown mode by taking this pause by creating this break in there um, by using their essential oils and taking some deep breaths it really doesn't take um, too much to get us back when we're feeling triggered if we catch it earlier enough right so when you're feeling triggered you can use um, black spruce and coriander and cardamom, those oils together are really going to help you tap into your own strength and stability and your um, objectivity <laughs> and help kind of diffuse the anger um, that often comes along with feeling triggered, right? Because we don't want to move into that space when we're triggered of reacting without thinking. We, want to, we don't want to go down that well-worn pathway, we want to try to stop ourselves and start creating that space between the old pathway and our trigger so that we can see the new pathway that we've been working on, right? Okay, so one of the tools that I like to teach families is creating a pause uh, when this is happening. So a pause is just a practice of taking a short break when we're feeling emotionally triggered or flooded or overwhelmed. Um, and it's a great way to teach kids that it's okay to say, I need a break. It's okay to step away from something when you're feeling upset. Um, and it's a really good practice for parents because it helps us um, take care of ourselves so that we can show up better for our kids, right? We can hold space for their big emotions. So calling a pause is kind of like calling a timeout. Right? But I want you to think of timeouts as like, like a pause as if we're calling a timeout on a sports team. So when you're playing sports and somebody, the coach calls a timeout, it's for us to regroup. It's for us to calm down and strategize and have a drink of water and get back on track. Right? It's not about being going to the penalty box or being punitive. Uh, being penalized because you were upset, right? Or because you weren't playing the right way. And that's what the pause is, right? It's, it's not about being punitive. It's not about getting in trouble or um, being sent away. It's about attending to our own emotional needs and helping our children learn how to tend, attend to theirs. And so it's really important that you never ever say, you need a pause or go take a pause, 
right? We can only ever call a pause for ourselves. And now when you start practicing this, this in your family, it's really important that you take the time to, ex to talk about how it's going to look and sound and work and who gets to call pauses, everybody, right? Not just one person in the family, everybody in the family can call a pause. Anybody who's feeling emotionally upset can call a pause, right? And we want to just make some agreements around what it looks like, maybe practice once or twice when we're not feeling upset. So then again, when we are feeling upset and we need to use this, we can use it. Now for some kids, so for young kids, right, they, are, they often don't want to be alone when they're upset. So it's important to, to know that in advance that you may need to support your child through this process. And again, we want, we're just trying to help them move from being in that fight or flight state or that all, moving into fight or flight, um, their guard dog is barking, to being able to get their wise old owl back on its perch so that we can reason with them, okay? So in this step, in this step, what you're doing is soothing, okay? That's it. You're not trying to correct behavior, lecture, um, teach them a lesson, reprimand them. All you're doing is calming and soothing them, okay? Some of the oils that you can use for this process is cypress. Cypress is a great oil for helping us let go of control and step out of those power struggles that often are the cause for people feeling upset in the family. It helps us get more, uh, more flexibility in our thought process so that we can maybe see other options than the option that we've been stuck on. Um, and pedigree is a great one for helping us to create more healthy practices in our family and break some of those patterns of um, negative patterns that we might have been using before we started our pause. So using these two in your diffuser with a drop of bergamot can be really helpful during a pause. Um, and, or using, uh, again, the cypress, pedigree, and grapefruit together. Okay. So Taking the pause is just all about getting our guard dog to stop barking. That's it. And it is a necessary step before we try to solve any problems or do anything else. Okay. So um, when, <laughs> when we take the pause, we can practice self-compassion. And self-compassion is a wonderful tool to use for ourselves as parents so that we can um, tend to our own emotional needs and help ourselves with our own emotional triggers before we are able to be present and open and helpful to our children, be able to hold space for them and help them um, regulate their emotions, right? There's a myth in our um, culture that that says that children learn how to self-soothe and how to regulate their emotions when they are left alone to do so. But the truth is we can only learn how to regulate our emotions in relationship. So we need to co-regulate our child's emotions for them to learn how to soothe themselves and how to regulate their own emotions. Okay. So self-compassion is really the ability to recognize our own suffering, our own triggers, our own uncomfortable feelings, and tend to attend to them with loving kindness. So um, a couple of steps for the self-compassion track is um, to recognize when you are hurting. And so this could just be, I'm really annoyed, right? You don't have to be like, suffering, sad. <laughs> I mean, you have, you are uncomfortable, okay? You have a feeling that is making you feel uncomfortable. And sometimes that feeling is started because our child is doing something that's annoying us. And the annoying feeling is making us feel so uncomfortable that we just want to stop whatever our child is doing. We want to make our child stop so that uncomfortable feeling will go away. Now, when you recognize I'm feeling uncomfortable, I'm feeling really annoyed, what that does is it helps your body, it helps your brain automatically start to calm down just by naming the feeling, just by recognizing what you're feeling, okay? 
it helps your nervous system start calming down. Now, when you're able to relate your feeling to the normal, this is normal, other people feel this way too. So relate it to our human experience, right? I'm not the only one who gets frustrated with my child, right? It helps calm us down again because it helps us feel connection. And when we feel connected, we feel calmer. And then the last step is to say things that are nice to yourself. Validate your feelings. Say something friendly to yourself, right? Often when we get into this state, like I said earlier, when I'm feeling triggered, what I often say to myself is, I can't handle this. I'm going to lose it. And then, I, and then I get judgmental about myself. And I say things like, I'm such a terrible mother. I'm a horrible person. I just yelled at my child, right? And I want you to think about what it would be like if your best friend called you up and said, oh my gosh, I'm such a terrible mom. I just had the worst fight with my daughter and I yelled at her and oh, I just feel terrible. Your response to her would not be, oh my God, you're terrible. You're an awful mom. I can't believe you, right? You would never say that. <laughs> she would say something kind to her like, oh, it's okay. We all have hard days. That was, must have been really hard for you, right? Tomorrow's a new day. You'll do better. You'd say something like that. You give her a little pep talk. Try to make her feel better. You know, we've all been there. And so I, that's what I want you to do for yourself. Pretend that you are your own best friend. Pretend that you are the most soothing, comforting therapist there is. <laughs> and, and speak to yourself in her voice of empathizing and validating your feelings, um, saying, saying something like, oh, this is really challenging for you. You're having a really hard time, right? When you, again, when we do this, it helps our system calm down. It helps our nervous system calm down. It helps us feel better and more confident um, and, and helps us get into that, that space of being emotionally available for our kids when they're feeling upset. Um, so a couple of oils that you can use for this is magnolia. It really helps with us, um, with helping us find our compassion um, and being able to offer our self-compassion. Um, and pink pepper it is really helpful because it helps us recognize our self-judgments. So it will help you pick out those phrases that you've been saying to yourself, like I've been able to with my my. I can't handle this, I'm gonna lose it phrase, right? It'll help you figure out what those are and be able to show yourself more love and kindness around those types of phrases, okay? So once we're able to give ourselves some self-compassion, then we can go to our kids and show them empathy, right? And it's basically the same thing we've just done for ourselves, now we're gonna do for somebody else. So empathy is just the ability to understand and share the feelings of another, to make another person feel seen and heard. It's basically the ability to say, I understand what it's like to be you right now, and I can, I can communicate that to you, okay? So using lavender is really helpful because it really helps calm our emotions, and it helps us feel seen and heard. So diffusing this or helping your child use it while you're while you're showing them empathy can be really helpful. Um, and kumquat helps us break those patterns of repressing feelings. So it invites other people to validate our feelings. So again, if, you're, if this is new for your, you and your child or you and your partner even, then using kumquat can be really helpful in just helping us um, to invite others to recognize when others are trying to empathize with us. Um, so the best way to communicate empathy is really to just connect with the, ex the feeling behind the experience. So we really just want to name the feeling, right? You seem angry. Whoa, you look really sad or really frustrated, right? And so you can just use those you statements with a feeling word attached to it. And now when you're doing this, you have to be careful that you are, your facial expressions, your tone of voice, and your body language is communicating the feeling as well. Because so much of our um, communication is done non-verbally, 
we really want to make and and often when we're in that space of the guard dog growling the part of our brain that actually understands language um, might be impaired <laughs> it's really helpful to communicate more with um, with the tone of your voice and your facial expressions than it is to communicate with words okay so keep your your sentences short and sweet um, make sure you're you're naming a feeling dan siegel says name it to tame it i love that um, sentence basically what you're doing here is helping your child make sense of of what happened by naming the feeling right so when you do this you're connecting the side of the brain that's the emotional side of the brain with the intellectual side of the brain and you're connecting them and when we go across the hemispheres in our brain when we connect the two hemispheres of our brain what happens is it, it creates a calming sensation for our body so even doing some cross body activity <laughs> can be really helpful when you're feeling upset okay so when we're practicing empathy we want to make sure that our tone of voice and our facial expressions relate what what the child is feeling or what the other person is feeling these these are tools for people not just for parents okay so you can use this on with your coworkers or with your partner anybody else in your family your friends this is going to be helpful with them as well as as with your children so when you're practicing empathy um, you want to make sure that you're reflecting the feeling right and sometimes parents move into robot stance when they're trying to do this because they think they need to stay really calm um, and not express emotion because they don't want to trigger more emotions in their kids but the truth is that they need to see their emotion reflected back in our faces in order to feel seen and heard, in order to feel understood, okay? So for instance, if your child was feeling really disappointed um, that they didn't get to have more screen time, you might, you, <laughs> you don't want to say, ha ha, you seem really disappointed that you had to turn off the screen right? They're going to think you're mocking them and that's going to make them more upset. They're not going to feel understood. But if they're really disappointed and you go in there and you go, whoa, you, you seem really disappointed that you had to turn off your screen right now. They're going to feel understood and they're going to feel heard, right? Um, and that's, that's what's important and that's what's going to help them feel calmer. All right. Um, Sorry, I see that somebody just said, could you show the previous slide real quick? And I'm not sure what that slide was. So if you um, add that to the comment, Martha, I'll flip back to that slide for you. Um, oh, and Jennifer says that she love, love, loves these cards, <laughs> that she has them out in her, her living space and pick them up regularly. Such a great advice on them. And I'm loving the oil suggestions as an additional tool to help work through those tougher parenting moments. That's wonderful, Jennifer. Thank you. The slide on the pause with the diffuser. Okay, let me go back for you, Martha. Let's see. There you go. Does that help? That diffuser blend was two drops cypress, one drop pedigree, one drop bergamot. Or you could swap in grapefruit. Either of those would work. Okay. So we talked about a couple of things that we're doing when we're feeling like we're feeling upset, right? When we're feeling triggered, we're going to take a pause and then we're going to practice some self compassion. And then we're going to offer some empathy to somebody else if they were feeling upset as well. And after we can, after regulating, empathy can help us continue to calm down and make sense of our feelings. So it really helps kids learn, learn about feelings and why they're feeling the way that they are and helps them learn how to regulate more when they feel understood. And they understand that a feeling comes and goes and they understand that you, you can hold space for their feelings, that you're not gonna run away from their feelings or they don't have to be alone. It doesn't seem so scary then. Right, so you could use this um, diffuser blend for empathy. One drop lavender, two drops kumquat, and two drops marjoram when, when you're in this stage. 
Um, and again, you can, you can do this just in the palms of your hands and smell it. You can have it going on your diffuser, whatever works for you. Um, or you can just use it topically as well, right? Um, again, the, calm, the lavender helps with calming and helps us feel seen and heard. So it helps with that communication of, of empathy. Um, the kumquat helps with recognizing when somebody is offering you empathy. And the marjoram helps us feel connection. So, and empathy helps us feel connected as well. So the, the three of those together work really well to help us calm down and feel that connection, that love that we need um, when, we want, when we need to feel understood, right? Empathy is such a huge tool um, that we can use in all our relationships. And it's, it's a really profound tool for helping us feel calmer. Imagine that you have just come home from work and you had a really bad day and you walk up to your partner and you try to explain to him or, or her what has happened to you and they brush you off and say, oh, it'll be better tomorrow. Is that going to help you feel heard and connected and feel like you can, you can move on with your day or is that going to escalate things? Right? It usually escalates things because you feel like they don't get it. They don't understand how terrible your day is or whatever was happening. And so you need to take it up a few notches so that they really understand what's going on for you. And when that happens, like that's the same thing that happens for our kids when we brush off the fact that they didn't get the purple cup at dinner. Right? They need to escalate. They need to take it up a few steps to show us that it was really important to them because we didn't get it the first time. When we use empathy, we de-escalate that. We, they don't have to take it up because they feel understood right away. And it builds that connection between us. It's a really nice, oh, I forgot I included this. So this is what empathy can look like. Just a couple of tips, right? You seem, you look, you sound, you are, fill in the blank with a feeling word that is, getting to the feeling behind their experience okay all right the last step is to focus on solutions together so these are some great steps for moving from feeling like there's a meltdown happening there's misbehavior happening um, somebody is losing it <laughs> Right? We can go through these steps and come out at the end at uh, focusing on solutions. Instead of um, blaming or shaming or punishing, we can focus on finding a solution together. And that might be, you know, somebody needs to apologize because they said or did something that wasn't okay. Somebody needs to clean up a mess that was made or we need to correct a behavior, right? Get somebody back online when they have misbehaved. So this, is, this, this step is really about looking at misbehavior as an opportunity to learn, um, problem solving together, okay? And so some oils you can use for this is lemon because it's gonna help you stay focused on task at the hand, um, stay focused on the task at hand, which is finding a solution. And magnolia, which is gonna help you see the situation more as a problem that can be solved instead of a punishable offense. Okay, and so again, kids and parents can use these oils topically or by applying them um, diluted to the inner arms and neck, or you can diffuse. And then you could just go through these problem solving steps, which is just identifying what the problem is, brainstorming for solutions, and then trying to find something that works for everybody. So after regulating and empathizing, the wise old, old owl, the <laughs> wise old owl should be back on her perch and then we can focus on finding a solution together and so a great diffuser blend for finding solutions could be lemon cedar wood and clary sage mm. lemon's going to help with that mental clarity um, and helping that that owl stay engaged um, cedar wood is great for helping us feel connected and like we're working together on this. And then the clary sage is great for helping us envision other options. So brainstorming, helping us figure out, being creative about solving the problem. So if you found those steps helpful, then I want to invite you to um, head over to my parenting group on Facebook. It's Parenting Essentials with Sarah Joseph. 
um, and you'll be able to find a free download there of three steps to calming an upset child and it includes the the cards in there with the um, the pause the empathy and the the focusing on solutions so it's all written up in there for you um, the other thing I wanted to mention is these other products that I think are fantastic that oil life has um, that can help you during this time when you're trying to parent during a pandemic <laughs> during difficult times during stressful times um, you can always check out my parenting essential cards i love the essential emotions book i mean it just has all the information in it about how um how you can use these essential oils to help you emotionally right it, the back where it says like it's just a list of emotions so you can go in there and you can find angry and then it will tell you what essential oil to use to help you di disperse that anger it's it's pretty easy to use and pretty fantastic so much knowledge and information in that book the other book i love um for helping kids is emotional superpowers this is the cutest book and it has so many great activities in it and information um, that's going to help kids become more um, emotionally aware and help them with self-regulation and confidence self-worth it's a really cute book i really enjoy using it when i'm um, doing my counseling with kids um, and if you check in the comments, you'll see that uh, Courtney from Oil Life has popped in the links for, for those um, products right into the comments, so easy to find. And if you'd like to hear more from me, then you can always check me out on Facebook at my Parenting Essentials with Sarah Joseph group where you can ask questions. Um, see the posts that I post. I go live every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time um to do some a facebook live that's directed by you the audience you tell me what questions you have or what topics you'd like me to cover and i i do that there um, i also have a youtube channel where i post all of my videos um, and i'm on instagram so you can check me out at sarahjoseph.ca i'd love to connect i'd love to hear how this stuff is working for you if you've tried any of the blends if you've tried any of the parenting tools tips that I provided tonight. So please do connect, um, find me and connect with me online. Okay, I'm going to stop my screen share and I'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody has. Well, we have a few minutes left here. I really appreciate you all being here with me tonight. It was very exciting. <laughs> no, I'm not, not seeing any questions, but let me just check this. All right. Yeah. Well, if there aren't any questions, then I will sign off and I would love to see you online again. So please come find me. Okay. Maybe I'll pop that screen back up for you so you can take a, a, a screenshot so you know where to find me. Okay. All right. Well, have a lovely day and or evening, I suppose it is now. And I look forward to seeing you again somewhere else. <laughs> Take care, everyone.